Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about the IMC data center topology feature. So this is live documentation. This is like having a Visio that is actually able to give you the the real time alarm conditions of the devices in your network. And this is actually tied directly to your other topology maps. So this is a good thing. Um, realistically, somebody's already creating a Visio. So by having this tied directly into your management station, it's always accessible. It's accessible for anyone with a web browser, and this is a good thing. For those of you who've uh, been around a bit, whenever you need the Visio, it's usually on the guy's laptop that's on vacation. So let's take a look at the feature. So we're going to log into our IMC here, and uh, as you can see, I've done uh, some, some custom graphics on it. Little Darth Vader action. May the fourth be with you. So we've got our, our typical web page here, and we're going to skip right over this. We're going to go straight into the network topology. So I'm assuming you guys have already set up your network topology. You've already got some devices in there. Um, I'm going to go into the data center topology here. There we go. We'll bring that up. And here you can see we've got the East data topology has already been put in. And I can right click. I can add a data center. I can add a room. Out of cloud, I've got some different options here that you guys can play with. So let's uh, let's dig right in and go into this data center. Um, the other thing we can do here is the automatically build the DC topology as well. All right, that's kind of a nice feature. So that allows you to uh, to go in, select your devices, import the devices, um, and really just automatically lay out your data center topology. So that's a nice feature to play with, but we're not going to do that today. Let's open up the Eastern data center here. So this data center has one floor and I've got one room in it. So um, you could have multiple floors and I could add multiple rooms. Change the name of the, the floor to whatever is meaningful to you. And this is the real nice feature here is it's really flexible. So we're gonna click on the room button here. And of course you can see the automatically build DC topology is there as well. So again, another option to do it from here for this specific room. Um, we're gonna go up and wait for this to populate. You can see we've got some uh, some racks already in here. I've done a little bit of work here. So we're gonna click on the edit button to be able to um, edit the objects in the room, edit the visual representation. Um, we can move things around. So I'm going to uh, go over here and click on the object panel button and I'm just going to select a cabinet here. Drag the cabinet out onto the floor and look at that, I got a cabinet on the floor now. So cabinets, they're not really live, they're just not part of the network. But it's nice to be able to have that representation in there so if you've got a remote intelligent screwdriver or RIS as we used to call them, you can tell the guy, hey, go down the hallway, you know, third row in, past the cabinet. It's, a, it's more of a landmark, so you can create this logical representation of the physical environment, like I said. So we can also add a cabinet in here. And uh, the cabinet, the nice thing about the cabinet is it is alive, so it will always take on the color on top. So you can see the one that we've got is orange. It'll take on the color of the device in the cabinet with the highest level of alarm. So in this case, we can see we got uh, orange, which is a major alarm. So right in here um, on the properties I'm gonna click on that the little dots there we will drag this up a little bit so you can see here a little better and you can see I've got some options here some some uh, image files that I've already created so I've got a HP 12500 the three part cabinet and C7000 so a rack of C7000 is already in here you can see the image size is always 100 by 294 I'll show you guys how to how to streamline that afterwards. We've got a generic icon as well, so if we want, we can now change it. Close cabinet. Nice. You got locks on your doors. Close cabinet doors. This is a good thing to have. Um, you can show that representation. In this case, we're just going to choose the three par image, and look at that. It's now the HP three par storage array. Um, looks just like it does in real life. Kind of a nice, uh, nice thing to have. So again, if you've got some troubleshooting, you've got your your guy coming in. He's going to come into the rack and go, hey. You know, go past the two three par racks, the third rack in, maybe that's the one we want to look at. So double click on the rack and open up, and as you can see, we can actually see what's in the rack here. So you can see that's the 2651XM, but it doesn't look like a router, and a 2811, again, doesn't really look like 
a router. A Juniper EX4200 doesn't look like a Juniper box, and that definitely doesn't look like a Cisco switch. So IMC does a great job of, of providing you all this third-party management, but there's some things that are kind of cosmetic, and we've basically left it to um, the operators, to you, to import the images whether you want to or not, right? But we, what we have done is we made it very easy. So we're just going to click on the custom device icon here. We'll uh, let you guys see that a little better. Um, we're going to click on the add button, and we're going to say this is a Cisco 35, uh, let me fix that typo, a Cisco 3560. 24 port. So that's the image that we want to go in here. It's 1U in height. Uh, I will go into my sand to pick up the image that I've already pre-prepared. There we go, and there is my custom icon. Okay, there's the PNG file. So again, the dimensions are um, something we have to keep in mind. Um, what I've really done is I've taken a pre-existing image that was already in the directories and just taken a Visio stencil and cut and pasted over top, honestly using MS Paint. So not a lot of uh, not a lot of magic going on here. So there we go. Um, we've got the Cisco 3560 in there. Still doesn't look like that. We need to now apply that new icon to this particular switch. So we're going to go click on configuration, click on the icons, drag this down to the bottom, and look at that. Cisco 3560, 24 port, click OK, and it looks like it's supposed to now. So isn't that pretty? We now have a physical, our logical representation of the physical environment, and we can place it in the right, um, the right slot. You know, is this in this case it's in um, the 33rd U of this particular 42U rack. So pretty standard stuff. Um, when I remote site, I'm going to be able to send in a technician and say, hey, can you please replace this switch? So why is this different from Visio? Why is this more, um, why would you be interested in doing this as compared to a traditional solution where you document it in a Visio and it sits somewhere, a nice picture goes on a wall? The reason is, is this is the beauty of the service-oriented architectures where you're able to tie these, the logical and the physical together. So uh, you can't really see this, it's off the screen. Let me drag it up here to the top. Sorry about that. Um, no, that's not going to help me. Okay, let's go up here. We'll right click again. So at the bottom here, you can see you've got a, a selection for cabinet location. So if I have an error on a particular device, I can instantly zoom over to where that device is. And if I add a new device, you can see this one here, add device to cabinet, it doesn't actually appear in a cabinet yet. So again, I'm going to go click on the 3560 here, cabinet location, click on that, and boom. I'm going to come over and it's going to take me directly to the physical, the logical representation of the physical location. And again, we can tweak this. Um, I can rename it here so I can say, you know, this is, uh, what, rack 3 in the first row. So we'll call this rack 3 in row, row 1. Um, if you've got good labeling in your data center as well, this will make it really easy for a technician on site for you to communicate with him because you've got it right in front of you. And again, web accessible, so anywhere you got a browser, you're going to be able to see this. Cool. So where are the files? For the racks on a Windows box, you can find this in the C colon program files, IMC client, web apps, IMC topo, rack topo. So again, for the objects in the racks, like the 3560, all I did was I took an existing icon and cut and paste the Visio stencil. You get the image size right every single time. Easy. Um, same exact thing that we did with the 3PAR. I took the existing icons that were in the topo room topo directory and just cut and paste the Visio on top of it makes life really easy for you. So how far, how detailed can you get? This is a picture of a room of a data center that is uh, represented here, logically. Pretty amazing, the level of detail. See you guys next time on the next IMC management tutorial.